This is Integrity's May XSS challenge and we're gonna be learning so much cool stuff today. But if you've never heard of our XSS challenges, then be sure to follow us on Twitter because every month we run a challenge. Because if you solve it, you and five others get a chance at winning some insanely cool Integrity swag. You've just missed out on this one, but be sure to follow us on Twitter so you don't miss any in the future. This challenge is also still accessible, so if you still want to give it a go anyway, then go to challenge-0522.integrity.io. But without further ado, let's get into the solution to this month's challenge. The first thing we need to do is explore this challenge. What is going on? Well, we get this page here, and this page has a home, has a products page, and a contacts page. And on this page as well, there is just not that much we can do. We see that when we click on these different tabs or these different pages, uh, that there is a get parameter page that changes depending on which page we visit. So that's quite interesting. Let's go into the HTML of this page to see if we can find something cool, something of interest to us. And first of all, it starts with the head that contains three script tags. So first of all, we have a, um, a JS-XSS library of version 0.3.3. We also have jQuery, jQuery version 3.5.1. And then we have one more script here that says jQuery.Query, query string modification and creation for jQuery. And here it says that's version 2.2.3. Now, what you should always do if you find these libraries is check if they are the most recent version and if not, if there are any uh, vulnerabilities present in there. So if we check js.-xss for version 0.3.3, we find that there is a vulnerability, but it's a denial of service, so we don't want to look into that. Um, for jQuery 3.5.1, we don't find anything. But when we look at vulnerabilities for jQuery.Query, version 2.2.3, then we find something quite interesting here. Because we find that there is a prototype pollution vulnerability present. And this is something we want to keep in the back of our heads because, well, this could be our way to get an XSS. But for now, let's continue through this uh, HTML here and see what else is going on because all the way at the bottom of the body of this page, we see there is another script and this script looks quite custom. It starts with creating an object pages and this object pages contains some HTML. It contains one, two, three, four pages with some HTML. All of this is static. So that's okay. That's weird. Interesting. Then we get to some JavaScript here. It starts with creating a variable PL and this is created by the get parameter page. So we're getting the get parameter page into PL. Then we're going to check if that page is available. And if that's the case, we're going to set the inner HTML of the root element to that page. Else we're going to just uh, set the location dot search. So we're going to just revert the user, redirect the user to page number one. Now, one interesting thing here is the use of inner HTML, because if you've looked into DOM XSSs before, then you know that that is a sink, a place where if user input is fed into, we might get an XSS. And that's interesting. So let's see what happens in that inner HTML. First of all, we add pages four to that. So pages four is just static HTML, and that is just, well, our, our top bar here saying home products and contacts. Okay. Then the second part is going to be pages PL. So PL is a get parameter. So that is user input. So we're getting the, uh, a certain page depending on our input. Now, sadly, the pages object, well, it only contains static HTML. So there is no more user input there. And even if we were able to put some user input in there, there is a filter XSS going on here, which supposedly filters out XSS. So, well, we're not really getting anywhere here. We see some interesting parts, but then they're all being blocked off. So the only thing of interest that we have right now is that prototype pollution. So let's dig in a little deeper into that prototype pollution. Well, in this case, we have our vulnerable version of jQuery query, 
and well, that's an issue. But looking on the internet for a proof of concept, it's quite kind of hard to find, but there is this great repository by Blackfan called Client Side Prototype Pollution. And when you're ever dealing with prototype pollution, definitely check out this GitHub because it is amazing. And there is this page on this specific CVE and it explains here, or it shows the whole vulnerable code segment, um, but to get into that, we need to have some more background understanding of how this uh, jQuery query works. But at the bottom, we have a proof of concept saying, well, if you just set the get parameter underscore underscore proto underscore underscore uh, and then the square brackets test to a value, then you have done a prototype pollution. Now, why does that work? Well, jQuery query, it allows the get parameter to create an object. So you have this object proto and it has a property test. Now, obviously the creator did not expect you to go and change the prototype because without you being able to change the prototype, that's a perfect implementation and that looks good and, and is, does what it needs to do to function. But by allowing you to also change the prototype, you can do some messy, messy things. So let's jump back to the code here and let's quickly showcase the things that can go wrong. For example, here I have created a settings object and it's just an empty object, but uh, our settings object can have a property is admin. In this case, since our object is empty, it's going to be undefined. Thus, if I then run if settings is admin, and then if that's the case, a console log you are the admin, and we run that, we see that we are not the admin because its admin is undefined. However, now I'm gonna set the underscore underscore proto underscore underscore dot is admin property of settings to true. And now, well, if, if I do settings dot is admin, that is true. However, if I show the settings object here, it is still just an empty object. Nothing has changed there, but I can click this open. And here we see something new, something called a prototype. Well, what is this prototype? Well, in JavaScript, uh, objects, they inherit from a certain prototype object. And this prototype object pretty much says, well, this is what every single object needs to have. This has a two string, a value of things like that. And every object by default has that. So if you on an object, just like in any other object oriented programming language, you ask for a property that does not exist in the object itself, it's gonna check in the prototype and see if it exists there. But now we have changed the prototype of object. Thus, if I now create any other object, so any new object, and I check if is admin is true, that is going to be the case because this, we have changed the prototype of object. We have changed the actual prototype. And that is how a prototype pollution works. Now in our case, what can we do? Well, looking at our code, we kind of want to add a new page here or change one of these pages so that uh, we can put our own content on the website. How will that work? Well, uh, this let's just uh, simplify this whole situation and let's create an array of four elements and these are our four pages. So we have this array of four elements. Now, if I grab the first element of it, it's going to say one and that's totally expected. Now, but if I take the fifth element of this, it is going to say undefined because, well, the fifth element does not exist. Now, how does it look up that undefined? Well, it first is going to check in the array, is that value present? And then it's going to check in the prototype. Does the prototype have an implementation for the fifth element of an array? And in this case, that's not the case. However, if I now say a dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore and then five, and I set that to, for example, hacking. Now, if I ask the fifth element of A, that is gonna be hacking. And not even that, if I create a new array, B here, and I ask the fifth element of B, that's also going to be hacking. So, with that, we know now how we can set the pages of that, uh, of that pages element to anything we want. So for example, if I now create the get parameter page, open the bracket, underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore, close the bracket, open it again, and then a five, and then close it again, like so. Then I can give it some content, in this case, just some random stuff. 
And then I set the actual page to five. So the value of page to five. Then we see that on the page, our input appears on there. And that is super incredibly dangerous. Because now, if we want to go for an XSS, it should be really, really simple, right? We just, we just have to put our payload in there because we're already putting things in the DOM using inner HTML. So if I put in a payload there, like um, an image tag with an on error and, a, 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 and an empty source, then we see that nothing happens. And if we look into our source, we see that it's somehow removed or, or vulnerable or, or payload here. Damn, that's a bummer. And if we look then at the code, we see that there is indeed a filter XSS going on that filters our XSS. So we now know how we can get something injected into the page. We just have to bypass this filter XSS now, and then we should be good to go. So let us bypass that. On to the last part of this challenge. Now we just have to bypass this filter XSS thing. And this obviously comes from JS-XSS. Now, how are we going to bypass that? Well, we have a prototype pollution, so maybe we can use that once more. And useful things you can do with prototype pollutions are called gadgets. And these gadgets can be found in various different libraries. So in this case, I'm just gonna Google JS XSS prototype pollution gadget. And what do we find? Well, we find that crazy cool GitHub of Blackfan once again, in this case with a gadget for us. And here we can see the vulnerable code fragments. It's not exactly a vulnerability, um, but because the prototype pollution is a vulnerability, but still this is maybe not the best way of doing it because somewhere in this JS-XSS, it has options.whitelist equals options.whitelist or default.whitelist. Now, if options.whitelist is undefined, the creator thought, well, it's going to use default.whitelist. But now we know that if options.whitelist is undefined, it's first going to check the prototype of object to see if that has a whitelist. And if that has a whitelist, it will use that instead. So, all we should need to do is overwrite this prototype of whitelist to whitelist specific tags that are allowed in this library. But luckily we don't have to do that ourselves. A proof of concept has already been created for us and we can just copy and paste that. So I'll copy it over here and just add that onto our payload. And if we add that onto our payload, then we see that we succeed and we get our little prompt here, which is obviously super cool. We have just solved this challenge. And that is the entirety of this challenge. This challenge really focused on prototype pollution and making sure that you are adequate in it because this is something you can actually find on real targets. But that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton of new stuff. If you did, let us know down below in the comments. Were you able to solve it? Let us know as well. If you liked the video, then like it. And I would love to see you back for the next one. So subscribe and take care.